This history that we talk about is part of my own history. My paternal grandfather and maternal great-grandfather came from India. Their struggles and those of the other indentured laborers still resonate within me. It is time that we in Trinidad and Tobago honor that struggle. It is only by keeping their stories alive that we can truly appreciate the fires from which we as a people have been forged. During the indentureship period when many Indian immigrants came to Trinidad, India was plagued by repeated famines. People were forced to seek economic opportunities just to survive. And many of our forefathers and mothers were promised a bright future. Yet, upon reaching the depot where they were housed for weeks before embarking on a ship across the Kalapani, what we usually call in English the dark oceanic waters, and into Trinidad, the full horror of what they had gotten themselves into became evident. The inhumane conditions they faced, such as the jostling for physical space and the inability to have privacy, made many of these migrants contemplate and even attempt suicide. Female immigrants were particularly disrespected, with male recruiters examining their bodies. This was just the beginning of their journey at the depot. One can only imagine what they anticipated would happen when they embarked on the ship, and more so in that far away land called Trinidad or Trinidad. By all accounts, their future must have seemed bleak. And upon arriving in Trinidad, these immigrants faced an identity crisis. Were they Indians, Trinidadians, or both? And as they searched for answers to the question, who am I now, they were confronted by the same crisis of identity that all forebears had to face. However, as time passed, they decided to create a small community where they could keep their cultural traditions alive. They practiced their religions and maintained their way of life against the backdrop of colonial oppression. Eventually, they embraced Trinidad as their new motherland, and it became the source of their economic well-being. Over the years, integration intensified, and today we can proudly see the strides that our ancestors have made by the descendants of those brave immigrants. We celebrate right on this venue festivals such as Eid, Diwali, Corpus Christi, and Christmas, each with its own national significance. We have several denominational primary schools and secondary schools in this country. We are no longer deemed illegitimate by birth. All marriages are properly recognized by law. We have Indian leaders having occupied the highest offices of this nation. Winston Dukaran is case on point, and even receiving the nation's highest awards. If our ancestors had a chance to glimpse into what would be their future, which is our present, they would no doubt be extremely proud to see the strides that their descendants have made, all because of the initial sacrifices they made. But I hasten to add that our ancestors did not have access to the expanse of technology that we have nowadays. They did not have computers nor smartphones. They had no internet. They traveled without vehicles and painstakingly walked miles without footwear to meet each other with a common goal in mind. They united in purpose and dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, the ideal way to honor each and every one of our forefathers is to build upon the platform they laid for us and ensure that we leave something greater for our children than what our ancestors left for us. They would certainly be honored in our own efforts in preserving their cultural and religious traditions, which they defended against the colonizing wind that was blowing against them. And this brings me to the unity which they promoted. Ladies and gentlemen, unity is something that every, every right-thinking citizen and politician must aspire for. We can certainly take an example from their lives. They became united for the sake of keeping traditions alive. Singing and praying 
together celebrating festivals, reading the holy books, and preserving religious customs for their children and grandchildren. Their unity was indeed their strength. Together they fought for their space to practice their culture and religions freely. They even fought for their physical space to live peacefully. They all toiled in the fields, sweating profusely, shedding tears and blood in this soil. And as the soil yielded to them, they also yielded to it as a child yields to its mother. Today, I pay tribute to all ancestors, whether East Indians, Africans, and the many other races which populate our beloved country. I pay tribute to all. We, their descendants, are Trinidadians and Tobagonians. We say Trinbagonians. This is our present unreserved identity which we recognize was carved out of their history. And I dare say that the majority of us are content within ourselves. We sing the national anthem, feel pride when we see our flag flying on the international world stage, when we bounce up a Trinbagonian in a foreign country, we cheer on our cricketers, footballers, our medalists. But it is not enough, ladies and gentlemen. And this is where we must muster up all of our ancestors' strength, determination, fortitude, grit, passion, and the unity of purpose which flowed in their blood must now be summoned through our veins to overcome the modern-day obstacles which face us, particularly crime. We must rid our country of tribalism, divide and rule strategies, racism, and oppression of any form and or fashion. So I say to you as I conclude, we must unite the spirit and will of our ancestors in our commitment to protect our women and children, and nowadays especially our children, from the criminals that are holding them hostage in so many ways. When we deliver them to a place of safety and respect, where their spirits can flourish and their aspirations can soar, then we can truly say that we have honored our ancestors. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the message I would like to leave with everyone today. While we recognize that our ancestors undertook the most crucial part of the journey to bringing us here today, our lives must be an expression of gratitude to their contribution. So let us emulate their dreams in which people can thrive in safety, in which our aspirations can take shape, and our children can travel a road without limits, where each port of call greets them without old prejudice and censure, and where the legacy that they have planted 178 years ago can finally shine against the darkest skies. Happy Indian Arrival Day.